I think the over-under on what dark matter might be uh, today, I, I think we're all kind of leaning towards a family of particles, subatomic particles, that have hardly any ability to interact with the particles we have come to know and love, quote, ordinary matter. And that would make it matter, dark matter, as we've all been describing it. And it's not a weird thing that you could have a particle that doesn't interact with our particles. Within our own family of particles, there are examples where the interaction is very weak or non-existent. You might have heard of neutrinos. This is a, a ghost-like particle that permeates the universe and hardly interacts with familiar matter at all. Yet it is part of our family of particles that we know exist and that we can detect and uh, interact with. So if, that can, if, if we can have an elusive particle that's part of our own familiar family of particles, it's not much of a stretch to think of a whole other category of particles where none of them give a rat's ass about the rest of us, and they just pass right through us as though we're not even there. Now here's what's interesting about dark matter. We know it doesn't interact with us, except gravitationally. By the way, what do I mean by interact? D does it bind and make atoms and molecules and solid objects? No, it does not interact with us in any important known way. But it also doesn't interact with itself. That's what's interesting. So if it interacted with itself, you can imagine finding dark matter planets, dark matter galaxies. Because to interact with yourself is what allows you to accumulate and have a concentration of matter in one place versus another. These are the atomic bonds and the molecular bonds that create solid objects. And if particles do not interact with one another, they just pass through, you just have this zone of mass not really doing anything interesting. So dark matter not only doesn't interact with us, it doesn't interact with itself.